Um, we are both biomedical scientists uh, working with um, Liverpool University Hospitals Foundation Trust. And we both graduated in 1993 from the same university in Nigeria. Well, we both met in the school and we became friends. And then later we became husband and wife. <laughs> can see. Just give, give us one second, please. I think there's something. Right. Okay. okay. And, and I'm happy and to share the slides, slides for you if you'd like, and then you can just uh, sort of next slide if that's easier. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So let's have the first slide, please. Yeah, this one. Who we have? Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Uh, I mentioned that in the same year, 1993, we were both classmates and um, we met in school, we became friends and then we became husband and wife. Um, I'm also a professional counsellor. I finished um, in Staffordshire University in 2019 and I have a passion to support people with um, their mental health and uh, that was why I went for uh, further study in counselling. And since I started working with people, I think I feel really, really more fulfilled and much more um, honored for people to share their problems and also to be able to get help when they need help from me. So we are both also sickle cell carriers, that means HBAS, and um, it's been a long journey um, when we got married in 1997. Before we got married in 1997, we knew we were both um, carriers and we knew the implication of that uh, because you have 20% chances of having a child um, with sickle cell disease or sickle cell anemia. So, this is slide now. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. So we 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 knew we were we we had the chance of chances of having children with sickle cell disease. We tried um, as much as possible. To, because we have been in the relationship for long, so we just went ahead and got married, and then um, we have been together since. Both of us are also both published authors, and recently we have been um, awarded um, Health and Wellbeing Advocate Sorry, I think we are lost now. Yeah. You want the next slide? You want you the just, you just yes. tell me when you're ready. Yeah. 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 So, so we're blessed with three children and um, two girls and a boy. And um, somehow we have, because we, we, we both of us are um, um, sickle cell carriers, we have emotional attachments with um, sickle cell disease somehow. So the three pregnancies we, we had were traumatic and sort of thinking of um, how the child will look like or how it will be um, children. So the first pregnancy, um, it was really traumatic for me, thinking whether the child was going to survive or whether was, how we were going to do, uh, deal with hospitalization and all the stuff that comes with um, sickle cell disease. We all knew this. And then, um, so thinking about that um, meant a lot. So um, until actually she came out and then um, after a few months, we discovered that she had, um, she was, she had um, sickle cell treats. So we were happy about that. And the second one, um, second pregnancy, same, but she was, um, always falling sick when she when she came, and um, I was so traumatized, thinking maybe she already had the disease, but she actually she did not have any sickle cell trait at all. So because she was falling sick because 
she had little resistance to malaria infection. So she had not, none of um, these sickle cell traits. So the third one was the most distressing, distressing one because I had him here in Liverpool. So after the, after I had him, the, um, what's the call it? Community nurse. Community nurse. Yeah, the community nurse came to the house and after, the, after taking the blood test, they came to give me the results and there were two of them. So when the first one came in, she was giving me all the information about sickle cell disease. She brought all the pamphlets. She mentioned success society. She mentioned support group. By this time, I was sweating. I was very uncomfortable. And um, unfortunately, Akin was not around. I was just alone with the baby. I was like, this is it. And um, it was so, 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 so traumatic. <laughs> but and then later she she later went back into the car and said, um, do I mind if um, the other person um, comes in and then explain exactly what the result meant? And then she went she went out and um, came back with the second lady. I was sweating. I was I was so I was so in fact I was I felt like crying. And then she said, um, we're not just here to we're just here to come and give you all the support that your child has sickle cell treat. <laughs> I was so, so relieved. I said, don't worry yourself. I also have sickle cell treat and that is all, that is fine. So um, with all this trauma, the thoughts and the stress um, we have been through, both of us, me and Aki sat down together and said, we wanted to support other people. And um, that was why our public um, awareness was based on um, informing people uh, to go for testing to know their um, um, what's it called? HBS genotype. HBS genotype um, so that they'll be able to have an um, informed decision before they get into any serious relationship. And uh, thought, thinking of, about other people, we feel we'll be able to support them. And that was why we started Path Lab in 2012. Um, I think I will leave the rest to Ake to continue. Can we have the next slide, please? Next slide. Right. So I will just briefly talk about the our community engagement. And uh, so when we felt that we wanted to do something to help others. We were thinking of reaching out to so many people and we thought of coming up with a community uh, organization to um, to be able to reach out to so many people. So we were thinking of which name to give to our community project and the name Path Lab Support came to our mind from the fact that uh, we remember uh, because we are both working pathology lab. So anytime we receive phone calls from the world, uh, the first thing we normally say is that this is part lab support. How can we help? So when we thought of that, sorry, this is part lab. Sorry, this is part lab. How can we help? So that is how the name part lab came up into our mind. So the part lab came from pathology, and we just put support into it that we'll be supporting uh, families and individuals affected with uh, sickle cell disease. And we also thought that maybe one day we'll be able to promote our noble career profession by medical science through Path Lab support. And we are happy today that uh, through Path Lab support, we are promoting biomedical science. So Path Lab support is registered in 2012 as a community interest organization. Now, um, from the screen, you can see our project, Secrecy Awareness, Blood Donation, and the rest of them. Uh, for the purpose of time, I'm going to focus uh, my presentation on Secrecy Awareness and the Blood Donation. And um, yeah, so this is uh, my picture from one of the workshop uh, workshop that we normally do uh, within the communities. So uh, because of our own personal experience that uh, we we already got into a deep relationship before we discovered that we are a sickle cell carrier, we tried to focus our campaign on sickle cell prevention because sickle cell disease is very preventable. So we encourage young people to go for uh, sickle cell screening 
so that they can know their HD status on time before any serious uh, relationship. And uh, those that we know that are at risk, uh, the partner at risk, we signpost them to genetic counselors for uh, more information and advice. We also signpost individuals who are living with sickle cell anemia to support group as well, so that they can be able to uh, share their pains and their experiences with other people who are facing the same challenges. Right, so um, the success that we have today regarding to our blood donation is uh, attributed to the fact that we work with different organizations. We believe that uh, uh, you cannot make any progress or success if you don't work with others. So we work in partnership with the uh, Liverpool Blood Donor Center, especially uh, whenever we are organizing community blood drive. We all, always go to the, uh, the blood, Liverpool Blood Donor Center for this particular project. We have done, we have organized the blood drive about three or four times now. Uh, we always go there encouraging people from our communities to come together in group of four, I mean, in group of 20 or 15, depend, depending on the availability. Uh, of the slot and uh, we go together having fun and uh, donating blood together no and also uh, just to let you know our next community blood drive is coming up next month july uh, 17th we also get support and work together with nhsbt that there was a letter that we received uh, from the nhsbt the letter states that um, uh, the nhsbt recognizes the work we do with the path lab and also they are supporting us in terms of uh, raising awareness with blood donation and sickle cell. And I would like to say that this letter that we got from NHSPT is very quite useful because each time I have meetings with the community group leaders and faith-based group leaders, I present this letter to them. And I've observed many times that when they read the letter, they feel relaxed, they feel happy to work with us because they know that we have a sort of uh, authority behind what we do. And uh, the next slide, uh, so I will be showing you some of the pictures from the event that we had in the past. So the first uh, picture is the community blood drive that we had in the past. You can see myself and some of our friends and colleagues um, from the community. We came together to give blood uh, at Liverpool Blood Donor Center. So the other two pictures, you can see that we are working with NHSBT. They give us their T-shirts to raise their awareness. They also supply uh, the donor enrollment form for us. So each time we go for awareness, we go with the NHSBT blood donor enrollment form so that people can fill the form. And if like, if they like, they give it back to us, then we also send it back to the NHSBT. This slide, you can see pictures from different community uh, groups. Uh, through our campaign, we've been to Nigerian community raising awareness about blood donation, encouraging people to give blood. We've been to Somali community. We've also been to uh, Pakistani community uh, group, encouraging them. We have so many uh, barriers and challenges in terms of uh, 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 cultural and religious barriers. So we try most of the time to encourage uh, one of the leaders in each community to be the guest speaker so that uh, they will be able to pass the message across to their audience. And also we provide some professional support as well when they are giving their, 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 their speeches as well. Um, this slide uh, is uh, the pictures of our event with collaboration or working together with uh, faith-based uh, groups. Uh, the first three pictures at the top uh, was taken when we had our campaign with a group of uh, five churches in Liverpool here came together. They organized uh, an event called uh, Community Picnic Event. Uh, and uh, we were there with our stand and uh, raising awareness, talking to people about blood donations, sickle cell, and also and encouraging people to sign the enrollment form. You can see some of them, they are filling the form and uh, they gave the form back to us and uh, we send it back to the NHSPT. The picture at the bottom is also an event that we organize within the church premises. 
uh, talking about the uh, importance of blood donation within the BIM communities. Yeah, we also work uh, with the local event organizers and uh, because we try to reach people and this is one of the ways we can reach people. We go to where people are. So the first picture was uh, a picture taken when we had cultural day events. Uh, the cultural day event was organized by one of the uh, community leaders here where uh, everybody from different cultural background came together to exhibit their culture and their behavior. And uh, uh, we were there to, so we, are, we were there to talk about uh, blood donation. We answers, uh, answered their questions and their, um, their, their fears about giving blood. So we were able to engage them during this event. The next one was um, African Fashion Exhibition Show. That was in 2019. So part laps of what was there as an exhibitor. We had our stand, we had our, our T-shirt and our banners talking to people, engaging people. Uh, about the um, importance of giving blood. And also we were able to uh, to sign up some few people during this event. Yeah, these pictures were taken at the Africa Oyin Music Festival. This festival is a national two-day event that attracts uh, over 40,000 people and mm. here in Liverpool, yeah. So these pictures were taken in 2019, we were there. Uh, Apart last were there, we had our our stand and then we engaged people talking to them about the uh, uh, importance of giving blood to support the sick, especially uh, to support people living with sickle cell disease. During this event, within the two days, we were able to sign up over wow. 100 people during this event. Uh, uh, of course, from different uh, backgrounds and uh, communities, both Caucasians and uh, BIM communities. And this number uh, does not include people that uh, receive the form from us and they prefer to post the form back to Reddit. Hello? Yeah, so this number does not uh, include the people that um, receive the form and they prefer to uh, complete the form and post it directly. Mm -hmm to the NHS PT by themselves. Some of them are talking to us about data protection, and we told them that you are free to post it back because it has a free postage, so you can do that. And mm -hmm. also some people prefer to sign up uh, online, so once they get the encouragement to give blood. Yeah. So that was uh, the pictures from uh, Africa Oye uh, Festival in 2019. We also work, of course, with uh, Liverpool Sickle Cell and Thalassemia Support Group. We work together uh, raising awareness about sickle cell disease, raising awareness about uh, blood donation. Whenever they have events, we are always there together to encourage people. Uh, in fact, many times they allow us to also talk about importance of giving blood. So yeah, we work with them uh, to to raise the awareness. Okay, okay. And uh, I think, yeah, so this is uh, our last slide. So like we always said before, we are both uh, published authors, and uh, I published my book last year, November uh, 2020. And what really inspired me to write my book was the fact that after working uh, within the communities, I discovered there are so many uh, uh, problems that uh, needed to be solved. So I wrote my book to inspire people to think about how they can do something through community action to benefit others and their communities. So. My book has um, uh, eight chapters, and uh, one of the chapters, chapter six precisely, I dedicated that chapter to promote biomedical science, and the topic says, I am a biomedical scientist, what are you? And uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah talk about that. And uh, I think I will ask Olu to mm -hmm. briefly talk about our own book, then we'll be able to welcome questions, please. So my book, uh, Take Hold of Your Life, it's just about being in charge. Um, I wrote this book to help everyone to think about whatever situation they find themselves, they should be able to take responsibility for their lives. And there are so many simple little things they can do to make a shift. And 
not that the, the problems might be, but their mindsets towards whatever they are in matters a lot. So um, because of my passion to help people and support them with their mental health, that was why I wrote this book. And the both books are on Amazon. I think they're about ten pounds each. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's the end of our presentation. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for listening. So we'd like to welcome your questions, please.